Um, so good morning, everybody. Um, it's a real honor and pleasure to welcome you to our workshop, Releasing Robots into the Wild, Simulations, Benchmarks, and Deployment. And so the goal of the workshop is to understand how simulations and benchmark can help us to efficiently deploy innovative and novel robotics algorithms to our applications. So my name is Angela Schollig. I'm an associate professor at the University of Toronto, a faculty member of the Vector Institute for Artificial Intelligence, and recently appointed Alexander von Humboldt professor at TU Munich in Germany. So, but I have not done all of this work. There's an amazing team of students here. Um, so co-organizer is Davide Skaramuza, who is also in the room um, from the University of Zurich. But then the real wizard, wizards behind the curtain are um, Adam Hall and Jacobo Panarati, PhD student and postdoc in my group, and um, Justin Yuan, Lucas Funke, Siki Su, and Melissa Grave, um, who are all PhD students in my group. So let me give you a brief introduction to the workshop um, and the motivation why we were interested to uh, organize this workshop. So we are generally interested in tools that allow us to translate novel robotics algorithms to real robotics applications. And we want to understand in this workshop how simulation and benchmarks can really help us um, to do that. Or can they? We will see from our speakers. Um, and a particular focus um, among the speakers is on algorithms that are based on data and machine learning algorithms, because those have become increasingly powerful over the past few years. Um, but they have their own challenges, such as, for example, how can we guarantee safety during deployment? So, just to give a brief recap, recap, so machine learning has shown to outperform hand-tuned controllers or controllers based on um, purely based on our prior knowledge. Um, and in particular, robot learning can outperform classical methods if the robot dynamics or the environment are unknown or changing. So robot learning design design can help us design control policies for unknown and changing robot dynamics and environments. And here is one video from my lab where we do off-road driving and use an ongoing Gaussian process to improve performance over time. But you know there are many other examples. You probably have seen the Rubik's Cube of OpenAI. It's very impressive what they can do, but it's also good to remember that only they can on, the success rate is only 20% on the real hand for difficult cases. Um, in my lab, we have used machine learning to achieve feats with quadrotors that we couldn't do without, for example, balancing a pendulum on a um, flex, like a, a commercial drone platform or flying and a long hand drawn trajectories. And then, you know, this. This is not only constrained to flying vehicles or hands. We have also seen what quadro platforms can do if you use machine learning. So the question is what tools get us from those lab, simple lab demonstrations to deployment in the real world? And so this, um, this workshop focuses on simulations and benchmarks. And I want to give a brief motivation why, why we think simulation and benchmarks are important. So we know all that large data sets have driven progress in machine learning on classical problems such as um, image recognition, image segmentation, and things like speech to text. So the ab ability to create and access and manipulate large quantities of data has really been a key to progress in AI. Robotics is a bit different because in robotics, uh, an optimal decision we, or the decision we make right now may change what the optimal decision is in our next time step. So to do something similar, we believe that we need to go from data sets to 
physics simulations to create like quantities of data for robotics learning similar to what has been done for the traditional machine learning approaches and you know this this often looks like this and i'm sure you have seen many um, physics based simulators during this conference then the next the second part is benchmarks and competitions and so why benchmarks and competitions and i think it's really important to look back and say that the competitions have really shaped the, the field of robotics um, in a tremendous way. So, for example, the DARPA Grand Challenge really gave the field of self driving a big push. Um, RoboCop trained the students who eventually built Kiva Systems, which became Amazon Robotics and basically is now helping you, you know, deliver your orders from Amazon quickly. Um, or, or, yeah. And being part of this um, pipeline. And then the Amazon Picking Challenge really pointed the robotics community towards grasping. And most recently, you know, the DAPA Subterranean Challenge has shown the power of leg robots. So I think these challenges and benchmarks have really um, had a big impact on the field. So how can we leverage tools such as simulation and benchmarks and competitions to make progress in robotics? I also want to give you a brief kind of more personal motivation um, why, why my group um, is organizing this workshop. And so if you come to our lab, you know, you see robots moving um, and generally we aim for high performance, um, high performance with these types of mobile robots. And so these are, you know, 25 drones flying in a coordinated fashion. But the project itself has the goal to eventually be deployed in, for monitoring applications in things like um, power, nuclear power plants. And so this is a mock-up nuclear power plant. Um, other projects in my lab, we fly outdoors um, based on vision and, to, and study cases where, you know, where GPS fails and how vision can take over or off-road driving. And all these um, kind of lab demonstrations have real, the goal is to really bring them to applications. So we actually flew these outdoor drones in, in five different mines across the world. Um, we have a self-driving competition team um, who has been competing over the past four years in a self-driving competition sponsored by General Motors. So we, we work with these robots on an everyday basis. And we know that machine learning can really push their, improve their performance. But we don't fully yet understand how robots can learn safely and reliably. And as a result, we recently did a review paper on this. And we, what we found in this review paper is um, that the field is really driven safe robot learning by two communities, the controls and the reinforcement learning community. And both of them increasingly publish in this area, but comparisons and benchmarking is very difficult. And just to highlight this for this specific topic of safe learning. So people look at different tasks in their papers. They make different prior assumptions. A very small percentage of the code is actually open source. So you see the green green part, like less than 25%. Um, the metrics people use in papers varies a lot, especially between the reinforcement learning and the controls community. And there's a lack of experimental evaluations. So not even tested on a simple lab experiment. And so that really you know, encouraged us to come up with a bench, a simple simulation benchmark where we can compare those algorithms. And we have also a larger effort now in this area. So if you're interested, you can kind of go to saferobotlearning.org to also see some of the past workshops and other resources we have. And so just a brief um, summary. So yeah, we created Safe Control Gym. And if you are interested in learning or control um, approaches, have a look. So the focus of that in benchmark is 
on model-based control so that we actually can compare reinforcement learning to model-based traditional control and see how, how well it does. Um, it focuses on learning uncertain dynamics and on studying robustness and constraint satisfaction. And so the platforms right now are quite, quite simple, but these were the kind of common denominator between the two communities, which is like the inverted pendulum and a quadro platform. And so if you are interested, it's on GitHub and happy if, if you have a look. It's based on a physics engine, and I'm sure we hear from other speakers today in the workshop um, about um, physics-based simulators. And yeah, the features that it has beyond the typical gym environment is it has symbolic models, which is important for the controls community. It has the gives you the ability to um, specify constraints, um, for example, safety constraints, and you can inject disturbances also in a repeatable way so you can do fair comparisons. And so then we actually were able to implement both controllers from the reinforcement learning control community and from the controls community. And we have a list right now. Um, and it allows us to compare those algorithms in terms of performance and data efficiency and safety and robustness. So this was just like kind of a quick personal lab motivation, we saw there was really a lack and basically no way to know how to go forward in, in this area without starting to compare or um, uh, contrast the algorithms that were on the one hand developed by reinforcement learning um, researchers and on the other hand by controls researchers. But now let's go back. Um, and see what our speakers have to say. So again, we focus on simulation and benchmarks and we separated um, the, the workshop into two themes. And the first theme which we will hear of today in the morning is on simulation and benchmarks. And we have an, an amazing set of speakers from NVIDIA, um, Jerry Pinot from Facebook and McGill and um, Karim Pereira from Ocado Technology. And then in the afternoon, we have the second theme, which focuses on transfer of simulation results to the real world. And again, a, a really amazing set of speakers. And I'm really looking forward to, to their contributions. Um, the overall schedule for today is the speakers each give 20 minute talks. So we have three talks before the coffee break. Then we have one more talk after the coffee break and then a panel discussion among those four speakers and you're very welcome to participate and ask questions and then um, we have a set of spotlight talks and those are this is the last item before the lunch break and then we have a lunch break and at the same time the people with the spotlight talks will also um, have posters and you can interact with them outside of this room and then in the afternoon, we have a second theme and the same idea, 20 minutes talks by the speakers and um, a panel discussion at the end. And if you are around, we probably also plan to kind of go for dinner at the very end, kind of celebrate the end of this conference. So finally, last few things. You can find the today's program also at tiny.cc slash ICRA dash file. We post updates on Twitter um, under Dinsys Lab, um, the handle Dinsys Lab. And there are ways, especially for the people who are online, we, we have different ways to ask questions. Um, you can ask questions in the Zoom chat, chat as well as on the YouTube live stream, and we will also collect those questions for the panel discussion. So there's not much time after each talk, but for the panel discussion, um, please you know, um, put your questions in and we aggregate them all. The very last thing I want to say before I hand over to Jakobo, who is introducing the first um, speakers, is that there is also another upcoming event at IROS 2022 on a safe robot learning competition, actually. Um, and so if you Google IROS 2022 safe robot learning competition, you will find it. And the important date is that there's a pre 
um, phase of the competition with the deadline on August 10th and another one on August, September 10th. So it, it's happening during the summer and the final competition is, is a, a virtual competition at Ecuador. Um, and we have a number of organizers, including people like Nick Roy, Vichy Kumar, and, and also David Escar, who's, uh, who's part of this workshop as well. Okay, so thanks everyone for being here. Also everyone who is virtually attending and I'll hand it over to Jacopo to introduce the first set of speakers.